A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, the one-stop shop for all things website. More on them later. Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and to the Range Rover, which I think is no secret that it's my favorite car. In fact, it's probably my favorite car that I've ever owned. I truly believe, even despite all of the horror stories and the cost of running these cars, sometimes these truly are just the best cars that you can buy for the money. Obviously, I paid £2,000 for this one. It was very cheap and it has needed subsequently well, around four grand's worth of work doing to it. So essentially, it's a six grand car if you look at it that way. And being honest, it's still not perfect. However, for the sort of average money you'd pay for an okay one of these, maybe between five and seven K, I truly believe they are the best car on the road. So about a week ago or so on Instagram, I asked you guys a question regarding topics on this car. And one that came up, which I thought would be interesting to discuss, was whether or not I've considered sort of getting a facelift because this is obviously an early Range Rover. It's a 2003 model, obviously it only came out late 2001, 2002. And so with the facelift and the upgrades as the years went on with the L322 generation, there were various changes and I guess you could say upgrades. And I thought it'd be interesting to discuss because it is something I have genuinely been thinking about a lot. Now quickly before we continue, I'd just like to share a quick message from today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. I'm currently in the process of designing my very own website for the It's Joel channel in order so that I can bring you guys some exclusive content, different types of things, perhaps blogs, giveaways, and lots more. Now, Squarespace really was the only option for me in terms of building a website because, as I mentioned, it is just a one-stop shop. Everything is integrated. Before you even get started, there's a plethora of templates that you can select and choose from and build your website from those, which really helps in terms of inspiration when you've got an idea in mind of what your website wants to look like, but you're not quite sure how to implement it. Well, using the templates feature, you can find one that's pretty close to what you want and go from there. Squarespace also has in-house tracking. So once the website is live, I'll be able to look at the website data using Squarespace. Analytics on views, sales, everything else, you name it, I can do it all through Squarespace. Another great feature about Squarespace is that all the websites are optimized for mobile. And certainly with me, most of the time when I'm browsing the web and looking at content online or looking at new websites, I'm doing it on my mobile, so it's really important that it looks good on mobile. Otherwise, I don't know, as a user, for me at least, if it's terrible on mobile, I sort of just switch off and I'll go somewhere else. So the fact that Squarespace optimizes websites for mobile will be really useful for mine, knowing that most people are going to find it uh, good to use wherever they are. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And once you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash it's Joel for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now, when the first iteration of the L322 came out, i.e. the one I'm driving, there were only two engine options available. Uh, one was a petrol and one was a diesel. Now, the diesel being a three-litre six-cylinder, which uh, I've never experienced, but people like Harry Metcalf have said that it really was just a little bit too weedy for the Range Rover. The Range Rover is a very heavy car, of course, I think almost three tonnes, and therefore sort of 200 horsepower or so from a diesel wasn't quite sufficient for what the car needed in all sort of environments. And then there was this, what I'm driving, the M52 or the M54, I always forget, BMW block, which is a 4.4 litre naturally aspirated V8 petrol, which I have to say is a stunning engine. It's so, so smooth. Um, smoother, I've always said, than the V12 that was in my 7 Series, believe it or not. It is smoother than that. Came with a ZF five-speed gearbox, which, yeah, six gears would be nice, but again, really, really smooth and it's an absolute peach of an engine it sounds if I just it's just got a lovely V8 tone to it and of course this is the engine in the block that you would have found in the 6 series the 5 series and uh, the 7 series of that era with the BMWs however this engine is extremely inefficient so on a really good run um, I will get about 18 miles per gallon now the car is 100 litres, uh, the tank capacity. So that in UK or, uh, terms is around, I think it's 22 odd gallons, something like that, maybe 24 actually. And on a really good run, I'll get around 450 miles to a tank. So you can do the math, fuel is about £1.60 a litre at the moment, 100 litres, 160 quid will get me about 450 miles, which is by no stretch frugal, 
um, it's quite, quite juicy indeed. So it's not a particularly efficient engine. It's actually surprisingly okay around town. It's probably more efficient at being a town car, believe it or not, than on the motorway, because as soon as you do get up to 70, 80 miles per hour, it just gets through the fuel a lot quicker. So it's not particularly efficient and it's not incredibly torquey. It's pretty good again around town. It'll get you up to speeds nice and quickly when you use the revs. But often on the motorway, if you come across an incline, you're on cruise control at 70, the car will need to change down to have enough power to maintain the speed. So it's not the best. I would like a little bit more power and a little bit more torque, which brings me on to whether I should consider a 4.4 TDV8. Now, the 4.4 TDV8 was available from 2005 when they first facelifted the car, along with a few other things like, I think they upgraded the lights. They also upgraded the interior somewhat, which is what I'm gonna come on to in a minute. And there was two new engine options or three new engine options available with this facelift. I think the supercharged version came maybe a little bit later in 2006, but essentially you then had the option of a 3.6 litre V8 diesel, a 4.4 litre V8 diesel, and a 4.2 litre supercharged Jaguar engine, which produced around 400 horsepower. Now, I think all three of those engines will probably be better for me than this one. Although I love this engine, it's super smooth, it sounds great, and it's just gorgeous. I think either the two diesels or that supercharged engine would all be better on fuel economy and they'd give me that little bit extra power that I would require. Now, as well as the engines being better, the car did get some various facelifts. So it got new lights front and rear, I believe, and they gave the cars things like heated and cooled seats, whereas I think, I think it was pretty tricky or impossible to get cooled seats on this iteration. Uh, they upgraded some of the switch gear as well. It looks a little bit cleaner. So the air suspension controls changed slightly um, and it came with a six speed gearbox as an option, which I think would make quite a lot of difference. It's not exactly a loud car on the motorway, but in terms of that fuel economy on longer runs, I think it would help with that. And so it's just an all round slightly improved version of the car. It looks a little bit newer. I think from the inside, it just feels a little bit more refreshed and a bit less dated. Just things like the fact there's no air vents on the top here, it got air vents there as well. And there's just you know a few extra bits that make it a little bit more up to date. And you can get those from around four or 5,000 pounds. And then later on, in around 2009, the L322 got yet another facelift, introducing the five litre supercharged V8 uh, petrol, which, well, I would love one actually. I would absolutely love one. And um, that's where you then got things like the glass cockpit display or LCD screen. I'm not exactly sure what you call it, but it got that. It got a ZF eight speed, I think a little bit later on, which came with the sort of twisty gear selector that you get in the L405. And more things were available, such as reclining rear seats, heated and cooled rear seats. Um, the list goes on. There was really a lot more luxury options available as the years went on, but especially in that 2009 facelift where the cars also got another light upgrade and grill upgrade and a few extra little cues to just make it look a little bit more modern. Now, the question is, should I upgrade to one of those? Now, truth be told, oh, wow, there's an Airbus A380. Fun fact, where are we driving right now? Actually driving to Heathrow Airport because it's extremely windy. We've got another storm here and I'm a loser and a nerd, so I'm going to go and watch the planes land in the wind. But yeah, there's an Emirates A380 just gone past. Uh, so we're getting close now. Anyway, should I upgrade? Well, honestly, I would really like to, and I think I might, because I love the L322. I think it's such a timeless shape. I think it might be one of the peaches of the Range Rover lineup. And therefore, I'd love to have the best. Now, 2012, they brought out the Westminster edition. I believe all 2012 cars were actually Westminsters and they're really nicely specced and you can pick them up for anywhere from about 13,000 pounds. And I think it's the TDV8, the 4.4. Now that seems like a really good engine to go for. I'm so anti-diesel, but everyone says that that is just the perfect engine for this car. And I know lots of you guys watching have the 4.4 TDV8 and rave about it as well. And I would love things like heated steering wheel. This being a HSE doesn't have that. I'd love the adaptive cruise control. You get them on the later models. The glass cockpit just makes things a little bit better. 
they updated everything down here. The switch gear looks more modern, heated and cooled seats, all of those sorts of things. All those sorts of things just make the car feel a little bit more special. And it is really just sort of the best of the best with the L322, which is something I would like. The thing that's holding me back from upgrading is the fact that this car, of course, I bought very, very cheaply, um, but there has been no end to problems. Now, they've not all been problems that have stopped the car being able to drive. Obviously, we had a brake failure issue in Wales, which was pretty severe, and we couldn't drive the car. Um, I've had various suspension issues. I had to replace an air suspension strut. I've had the oil cover gaskets done on the engine amongst brakes, lots of other things. And admittedly, they're actually quite routine maintenance things, lots of the items, but I've now got a knocking from the suspension and the air conditioning doesn't work. And there always seems to be something going a little bit wrong with the car. And so part of me thinks because I've already poured thousands into this car, why not just keep doing that and just, you know, keep it going. I've already spent a lot of money, so might as well spend a little bit more and just get it perfect. But I do feel like the issues will never stop. Now I could then spend anywhere between five and 15 grand on a really nice sorted facelift example, depending on how new I want it to go. But then am I just gonna encounter the same issues in a few years time with suspension components need doing brakes? And of course I probably am because they're just normal wear and tears on any car. But the issues that come with the Range Rover is what puts me off. Things like the air suspension, things like the engine uh, DPF, GPF valves and timing chains and things like that with some of the engines. I don't know. I'm a little bit torn as to whether to upgrade. So I do open up the floor for you guys to comment below and let me know what you think. So now that literally in the last few minutes, the storm seems to have passed through and the sun has come out, I thought I'd get out of the car and finish this video off. So really, I want to open up the discussion on whether it would be worth upgrading this car. Now, another thing I didn't mention is that, well, as you may know, I do get quite sentimentally attached to my cars. And this one really has been, well, my favorite car. And it is super, super special to me. And we've, we've been through a lot together, me and this car. And, um, you know, I would be very, very sad to see it go. So actually, potentially, if I could do so, I'd be looking at potentially getting a facelift or an upgrade to this car whilst also keeping it as a secondary Range Rover. I mean, what a ridiculous thing to be saying, but it's probably not worth all that much and wouldn't contribute that much towards a facelift, say, if I was spending £10,000. But I want to hear from you guys, my audience. I know there's a big Range Rover community here um, that are great and very knowledgeable. So I want to hear your experiences, whether you own the 3.6, the 4.4, the 4.2, the 5 litre, whatever it is. I want to hear what you think. Because like I say, my main concern is really around whether it's just going to be buying another set of issues. Am I just going to be buying another car that is going to have to basically have all the same maintenance done on it that I've already done to this? And is the upgrade of a slightly more modern looking and a slightly better spec car worth the outlay in terms of costs? I think it might be, but I'd love to hear your opinion too. So. Do stay tuned on this because I'm hoping to potentially make a decision on that very soon. But in the meantime, the next video you'll see with this car is I'm going to be cleaning it myself and getting off thousands and thousands of miles and months and months of winter dirt with uh, some interesting new products that I've been sent by Karsha. So I'm very, very excited by that actually. And it's gonna be super, super satisfying because as you have noticed, it's very, very dirty. And that has been deliberate because I've been waiting for the sun to come out and for the winter to pass so that we can give this a really nice clean in and out. So stay tuned for that, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and I'll see you all very, very soon.